Welcome to the Cumbrian Antique Centre in Brampton. We've two teams of sunny sisters competing with each other for the best bargain. Each team gets £300 to spend and an hour to shop. And if they make a profit, they get to keep it. And the experts are now allowed to take the change to buy a mystery object which might boost their profit. But will they do it? sisters that we have doing it for themselves are the Radiant Reds, Jill and Anne, and against them the beautiful Blues, Margaret and Sue. Welcome to Bargain Hut. Now, Jill, you are the fifth in a close family of six children, yes? Yes. What's your most memorable date in the year for you and your family? We do quite a lot together. We do barbecues and things, but we always have a big family picnic at Easter, yeah. uh, which is sort of half a dozen cars, 24 people. 24 of oh. you? God. <laughs> To your local monument to roll our Easter eggs. You know what? To roll your eggs at Easter, Tim. Roll your eggs at Easter. That's what you do, is it? Yes, oh, it's symbolic. Is it? Lovely. <laughs> anyway, that's quite bossy too. Now, right, and when you're not meeting with your family, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work in a learning centre for kids with special needs. Yeah, well, that's very worthwhile. What do you do with the rest of the time? Chuck uh, out Zeds? I like to do a bit of baking. Yeah. I um, started off my dad's wedding cake for her 16 years ago, and it sort of escalated. Do you like a nice... Moist sponge or one of those full-bodied fruit jobs? A nice full-bodied fruit job with lots of brandy. Brandy? You put brandy in it? Yes, it helps the cake mature. Oh, it does really like the sound of that. <laughs> Brilliant. OK, now, sister, Anne, you're the sixth in the family, so you're the baby, yes? Yes, I'm the baby some baby. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do all right on this bargain hunt, I tell you. So, what's your special ambition then, baby? Uh, my special ambition is to work with disabled children. Is uh, it? I've got two children with disabilities that have my own, oh, um, so and also look after my mother. I do quite a lot for my mother. Right. Being the youngest. But officially, you want to follow in your not so much older sister's footsteps, yes? Yes, correct. Very good too. Now, tell me about your collection. I've got about 300 pictures in my house. 300? Yes, um, and they're paintings, pictures, prints, whatever, whatever I take my fancy. I just buy it. Do people pull your leg about having 300 pictures nailed on the wall? Yes, they do. They think my house is like a small stately home because there's that many pictures on the wall. <laughs> any of them any good, though? Yes, I bought one in a charity shop for 50 pence, which was done by a artist called W. O'Shea from Australia, right. and it's worth a thousand pounds. It never is. And what's it a picture of? It's an outhouse from Australia. What, some old shed in Australia? Yep, it is so. 50p yep. and it's worth a thousand pounds. You are going to be very good at this bargain. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now for the blues. Margaret and Sue, two sisters from a family of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, what is it like being the youngest child from a family of ten? Well, I was very spoilt. Were you? Um, because I always got the new clothes in the family. Everybody oh. was jealous. Why was that then? By the time the hand-me-downs got to me, um, I always got the new clothes. Because the others were in rags. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what did your dad do? <laughs> My dad was a sailor. Was he? Uh, yeah. Did you have a lot of shore leave, did he? He did. He yeah. Did. <laughs> Ten brothers and sisters, he must have done. Anyway, very good. Um, still, all these brothers and sisters haven't put you off your present job, have they? No, they've not, no. What do you do? I'm a registered childminder. And how many little toads do you look after? <laughs> three under three at the moment. Really? Yes. But at least you get to give them back at the end of the day, right? I do, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Have you ever gone on an auction? you ever been to an auction? I've been to an auction, but I've still yet to make a profit. Why would that be? Because I'm always outbid. Are you? Yeah. Would you say you're a bit tight on the money? Could be that. Ah. <laughs> now, Sue, you're seventh in line I to am. the throne. <laughs> yes, lovely. But you're also a familiar media face, aren't you? What it was, I was appeared in the Express, the Times, and the sun. What page? Page six. Oh, page six. <laughs> <laughs> All in one day. Yes. Um, I was doing a, um, an advertisement for the company I work for, which is a well-known DIY store. Good. Yeah. Tell me about your holiday fund. Well, my holiday fund consists of the uh, the, the, the profit I make from my uh, bargains. What? In auction? Yeah, what? because I regularly, I'm a regular visitor to the auctions. And you make profits? I do. Um, and what sort of exotic holidays do they pay for? Well, uh, for instance, um, my uh, best buy was um, a pair of Crown Derby Imani uh, patterned candlesticks. 
-hmm. And um, I paid £180. What, for the pair? Yeah. yeah. And I sold them on a well-known auction site. And I sold Lovely. them for £1,200. £1,200? Pounds? Pounds? I did. Well, there you go. I tell you, I'm knocked out by this. Now, the money moment. 300 smackers. Who's going to take yeah. that? Meg's going to have that. Take that. And your expert awaits, and off you go. Keeping the Reds rolling with potential profits is the stylish Kate Bliss. And boosting the blues is the ever debonair Charles Hanson. Oh, ladies, there you are. Come and have a look at this. Now, what do you think about that? Honestly, it looks like something from a catalogue shop. From a catalogue? Well, I think that's a bit harsh. What do you think, Anne? I think it's really nice. It's in really good condition. The thing I like about it is that we've got some little signs of quality on it, if we look closely. The egg cups, of course, have got gilt interiors, which just sets it off nicely. And also we've got the spoons here, the set of four, and if we just take that out, we can see that it's actually mother of pearl. It is silver plate rather than silver. Now, normally I'd say to you to avoid silver plate to buy because the market is very down at the moment. But this has something a little bit extra. Now, if we look at the marks here on the base, can you see they're quite small? But we've got EPNS, which you usually find on a piece of plate, standing for electroplated yeah. nickel silver. But we've also got the initials WMF. Now, those stand for a German factory that made this. And in fact, it's called Württembergische Metallwaren Fabrik. It's a bit of a mouthful. Mm -hmm. But they were very well known for making Art Nouveau pieces in plate and pewter at the very early part of the 20th century. Now, normally the objects were tableware or vases or even just purely decorative, like plaques, and very overtly in the Art Nouveau style. Which this is not Art Nouveau. It's nothing like it. You're absolutely right, Jill. You know your Art Nouveau. Well, This is much more Victorian in style, with this little bit of fluting around the egg cups and around the base. But, although it isn't the more commercial Art Nouveau style, it has got that WMF mark, which is really a sign of quality, and collectors will look for that. Right, OK. I mean, it's quite an elegant little piece. I'll come back and haunt you if it doesn't look for sale. <laughs> well, it says 65 on it, 65 pounds. Now, I think if we could get it for slightly less than that, I still think we stand a chance. It is WMF at the end of the day. Well, Anne likes it. I'll choke her later. We'll, <laughs> we'll let you choose the next one. OK. OK, come on, then. They did the deal at £55. Let's hope Anne is right. They're fairly plain teapots. Yeah. Well, tell me about them. Well, I bought these trolls mainly for... Um, sentimental reasons really because it reminds me of my childhood because what happened was um, my mum got the tea delivered Rinton's tea van used to come round and uh, we all used to have an argument of who could have the, the postcard because it was right. like the tea leaves right, right. and um, <clears throat> we used to have an argument who could collect the most cards. In Derbyshire where I am I would catalogue them and value them as purely being blue and white teapots circa 1930 and obviously transfer printed in this age-old pattern, the willow pattern, which was first inspired by Spode or Josiah Spode um, and obviously inspired by China since tea was first imported from China in about 1598, 1600. Um, to me, as fairly plain pots, they're worth in Derbyshire, south of here, no more than 30 or 40 pounds for the pair. But if you say to me, you think there's more marketplace for them up here? Well, Newcastle, mm. where these were made, is only So how far is Newcastle? It's only about an hour away. Is it? Yes. This will bring back memories to everyone who picks up that teapot. They need to be sold locally. That's where the market is, yes. quite clearly. Mm -hmm. What's on them? 103. 103, 103 pound for two. All oh, right. That's very expensive. I know. OK. If you can get them down, have a go. To me, they're not worth it. But... Prove the expert wrong, and I should be very, very happy. Right, we'll go and try and get them down. The Blues got the pot for 80 smackers. Not everything you come across in these antique centres is antique. Take this charming couple here. Those viewers of a certain generation will recognise these two characters. They're Trixie and Dixie from the Hanna-Barbera series of 1958, frozen for all time, lying in bed covered up with their eiderdown. Aren't they sweet? Well, I think they're sweet anyway. So, 
What is this thing, just a novelty? Well, it does have a practical function. If I turn it over, it's got a zip, and this thing is actually a negligee case. Every well-dressed girl in 1958 would fold up her nightie in the morning, stuff it in a little cushion like this, and plonk it on the counterpane until it came to getting into the negligee the following night. Now, you might think that a nice little negligee case like this is worth about a £10 note, right? Imagine my surprise, then, when I see that it's priced up at £85. How can that possibly be? Well, on the back, it's got a little label that says Merry Thought. And Merry Thought made soft toys from the 1930s eccentrically in Ironbridge. And this is one of their productions. So this is actually a collectible. So, any of you young girls out there got any Merry Thought negligee covers lying on your counterpanes? I suggest you go and do a revaluation. We are <laughs> of sauce ladles. Oh, they look good. What do you think of those? I wonder where they come from. Let's have a little look. Are they silver? Now, I thought you two said you didn't like silver and you didn't want to buy silver. They were just nice and they appealed, so... Mm -hmm. Well, let's have a little look. Ah, now, they're not quite a pair. Now, that's a bit of a shame, because obviously a pair is slightly more commercial. But they're not a bad match, are they? No, they're quite nice. And let's have a look at the back and the hallmark. Well, these were hallmarked in Edinburgh, and they're slightly different in date. This is the earlier one, and this is dated from 1809. And this one here, slightly different pattern, is 1815. So they're both the George III period, but just about six years apart. And if we look at the patterns, this is called Old English pattern, because it curves away at the end of the handle. And this one is called Hanoverian, so it just tips up slightly at the end. I'll put that that's sweet. So how much are these, do you know? I think they were 65. Well, I'd like to see them in the 50s if we're going to stand a chance of making a profit. But if you both like them, I think they're great. Well, I think we ought to go and do a deal on those. We'll go we'll try. Do. Let's go. Hmm, 50 pounds for spoons that don't match? Be daring today and sally forth onto our website for lots of tips on bargains by simply clicking onto bbc.co.uk slash lifestyle or simply ring up for service. Now, I don't think I'm being selfish here, Margaret, but I, I like this. It's a very solid oak pipe rack. Yes. But it's also got this monogram. Your initials? C.H. Charles, <laughs> Charles Hansen. Charles Hansen. That didn't influence you in any way, did it? Just a bit. Yeah. What sells it to me is this wonderful design. It's sinuous, it's the Art Nouveau, it's the Arts and Crafts. And I like it, basically. Is this piece original, then, to this piece? You're not bad, are you, see? No, You're well, I was, thinking it, looked <laughs> little, I was thinking it looks a bit lighter, that's all. On the back here, yeah. these screw holes and the screws are quite clearly... The piece would date 85, 90 years old. It's about 1910, so it's almost 100 years old. It's on at £24, and I'm sure we can negotiate down to about £18, and to me, that will be profit for us. You're what do you think, Margaret? You're that confident? I think so, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> I should be. It's a good object, and if it doesn't make £25 in Carlisle or in the north, I should be amazed. We'll go for it. Be amazed. It cost eighteen pounds. I can't keep up with you two. Now, what have you found now? I found this, Kate. Hey, I like that. That's a bit of fun, isn't it? It is quite quirky. Because it's Scotch and it's come from Scotland, I thought, yes, we must, must see what Kate thinks of this. Now, this is the Scottish spirit coming out again, isn't <laughs> oh, it? Oh yes. <laughs> Do you like your whiskey? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Now, do you know this is silver overlaid on the glass? Did no, you know I didn't. that? No. no, this is definitely silver. And it's a really attractive sort of lattice work. I really like the scotch in script. Isn't that fun? Now, we haven't got a silver hallmark on here, but we have got a lovely little shield cartouche on the back. In fact, the style of the engraving, this monogram on the back here, helps us to date it, certainly. And I would say that looks about 1900 to me, perhaps 1910. And the style of the script also is typical of that period. The fact that it hasn't got a stopper, I think you could use that as a little bit of bargaining power. Well, what sort of price is it? £58. 
Well, I don't think that's too bad, but I think perhaps we need some of your persuasive Scottish charm again. We shall go grovel, see what he can do. All right, you come and grovel, I'll watch. <laughs> I think you're better than me. <laughs> come on. These smart sisters begged and got it for 50 quid. Now, I do like something on the wacky side, and I hope you'll agree that this is a pretty wacky piece of ceramic. So what is it? Well, believe it or not, it's a type of decanter. It's made of thickly potted clay, quite a hard and shiny glaze, but crudely applied. And if you look at it carefully, this polo ring is thicker on that side than it is on that side. This is typical of the Dunmore ceramics works, central Scotland, and I would guess around about 1880 or 1890. And what's its purpose? Well, to be perfectly frank, I hadn't got the faintest idea until just now, and some awfully useful person told me that actually these Scots on New Year's Day, immediately New Year has arrived, go wandering around, offering each other lumps of coal, knocking on each other's doors and whatnot, and what they did was to pour out a drop of the old amber nectar. This thing is actually a whiskey decanter. So you'd have poured out to your neighbours a wee dram on New Year's Day, and everybody would have had a very lucky and jolly New Year. Isn't that a fun object? Well, we're all learning something, aren't we? Every day, including me. What I would like to know, though, is what it's worth. What do you think? 20 quid? 30 quid? 190 pounds. Oh, <laughs> I lost you. It's a massive place. Charles, and there what you do you are. think of this? I like it, Charles, because I noticed that it had a little leak. Yes, you're in right. The it has got a leak. Yes, yeah. good. Check out this nice. Can we see here this almost wheat sheaf stylized radiating design? Yeah. And it's very heavy, Margaret. Feel that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is quite heavy. It's, it's, it? it's press molded, mm -hmm. okay? It's 1950s. Mm -hmm. And you're right, the name game is Lalique. Yes. Okay? And Lalique, he died in 1945. But this is typically a 1950s cake dish with these handles here mm -hmm. on either end. And Lalique is a name to conjure with. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he was born in 1860, was at first a very important Art Nouveau jewelry designer. And then really, by about 1905, he began to produce very fine quality glass in the Art Nouveau style. But this is late. Mm. This is post his death. Yeah. It needs to be well exposed to a wide marketplace, i.e. to find an audience to hopefully bid yes. up and bid well, yeah. i.e. a French buyer or a good London buyer who yes. obviously will buy stylish glass. So if I say, Charles, we've got this for £80, do you think we'll make I'll a profit? I'll be impressed. I think the scope... Yes. I've got a feeling yeah. that this is going to do it. Towards low guide at 80, it'll have a good chance. Yeah, lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Go and buy it. We'll go and buy it. Okay. Great. That's us. Great. <laughs> A fine plate for £80. It's not just our contestants who'll be on the lookout for a bargain today, but our experts are also going to be working hard to find a mystery object with the team's change, which will then be sold at auction and may boost their profits, or even lose some. So, the Reds are off to auction with an egg cruet bought for £55. Let's hope the bidders don't think it's straight out of a catalogue. Two silver ladles, bought for £50. They don't match, so will that affect the profit? And the whiskey decanter, also bought for £50, but could they be scotched by the missing stopper? Jill, there, you had some great shopping, didn't you? Yep. Which item is going to bring the biggest profit, then? We think the ladles. The ladles? Yep. Really? OK, how much do you spend overall? £155. £155. That's one four five, please. There we go. That's a change. Kate, £145. Thank you very much. What are you going to do with it? Well, the girls bought really all silver or silver and plate, and they did tell me they didn't particularly like silver, so I think I'd better find them something completely different. Something nice and brown. Hmm. Maybe. Anyway. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. See you at the auction. OK. The Blues bought the teapots for £80 the pair. Here's hoping the bidders are thirsty. And they got a bargain at a mere £18 for the wooden arts and crafts pipe rack. The Lalique plate cost £80. Let's hope that there are some collectors at the auction. 
great shopping, yes? Great, yes. What item is going to bring the biggest amount? We think the Lalique tray. The Lalique tray? Yes. And how much do you spend overall? We spent £178. So, that's £122 change. Correct. Got it? Lovely. Yeah. Here's £122. Here I go, Carlos. Thanks, Father. Not at all. <laughs> you haven't had as much money as that since you left school. What are you going to spend it all on? Not sure yet. Really? <laughs> but I'm confident. Yes, something will make profit. <laughs> I'm sure it'll turn into something. Can't okay. wait. Good luck with the shopping and see you at the auction. <laughs> Wish me luck. Mmm. Isn't this beautiful? Let's go and see what the area has to offer. The Lake District is famous for many things. Its natural beauty, Beatrix Potter, Wordsworth, the home of British mountaineering. But we also have to give thanks to the lakes for this, the humble pencil, not my artistic ability. Evidence suggests that Cumberland graphite was used in the Michelangelo School of Art in the 1580s. Extraordinary, isn't it, to think that a lump of soft old rock from these hills contributed to the Italian Renaissance. And what about the pencils themselves? Are they collectible? They are, but what I'm really interested in is the materials associated with those finished pencils. All pencil cases from Cumberland are contained in cedar wood, and the skills for making those specialist cedar wood covers for the pencils existed for other objects too. If you take something like this, it's a little pencil pot, it's made of cedar, it's exquisitely turned, and if you turn it upside down, interestingly, it's got a wee paper label from Hogarth and Hayes, pencil and cedar good manufacturers here in Keswick, Cumberland. Isn't that lovely? And here we've got a bag of dust. Nothing went to waste in the Victorian period. Here we have aromatic pencil cedar dust, an agreeable and sure preventative against moths. You feel a few moths coming in your sock drawer, you get out of the pencil factory, get some good old cedar dust, bung that in with the socks, and it's death to all moths. Marvellous object. And this fellow could have been personalised for one of my children. Look at that. Frederick Cosmo Sheldon Blundell Wanacott. Brilliant. And what does it contain? If you look inside, little shards of graphite, which you would have used to draw on something instead of a pencil, but you keep it in the graphite cedar box. All of these things are valuable and collectible. But without putting too fine a point on it, the factory here today continues to bring in innovations. They produce nearly three quarters of a million pencils a week. And I bet you our auctioneer back in the sale room has got one in his pocket. Time to pop down the road to H&H King's auctioneers in Carlisle. I'm feeling quite optimistic. So, Paul Lado. Very nice to meet you. And you, Deb. Great. Now, out of this lot for the Reds, for Jill and Anne, which is your favourite piece? In truth, it would certainly be the Scotch bottle, but it's fatally flawed, I'm afraid. Is it? It is, rather, yes. What's the matter with it? It's taken a blow at some point. There's a nasty little star crack lurking behind that escutcheon there. I well, think it will kill it to the collectors. So, what's your estimate on it than damaged? We've gone 40 to 60, it's still a decorative piece. Well, that's fine. They paid £50. Pounds. They may or may not have known about the chip. But anyway, it's in the frame, which is great. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the two little Georgian ladles? Any good? Handsome, absolutely. I'd prefer them a true pair rather than Harlequin, but uh, Scottish silver, uh, hot at the moment, I think they'll do well enough. OK, mm. how much then? 80 to 120, I can see in those. Really? Mm -hmm. 50 pounds they paid. That's fantastic. That's a good result. There's another little profit coming, maybe. Right, and what about the egg fruit? I think that's going to appeal to today's market. A thing of quality, in good condition, uh, and striking. I mean, it has charm. That's what people are looking for today. That will sell well. How much? 50 to 80. Great. 55 pounds they paid. Good result. Super duper. Well, we're moving along very nicely with that. Let's find out now what the Reds' bonus item is. Has Kate chosen a winner? 
Now, girls, Kate, what is your bonus item? Well, the girls went a bit mad on silver, and I wanted to find something that comes from your roots, because I know you're very nationalistic, aren't you? Oh, yes. So, oh, yes. I got you something Scottish. Oh, yes. Oh, and it is, of course, a pot, but it's known as Weemsware, and Weems is a factory in Scotland known for making utilitarian objects, functional objects, with um, quite simply hand-painted decoration. Now, big cabbage roses were the most common pattern, but these sort of Victoria-like plums are a little bit more unusual, and it's actually highly collectible. I think it should go well close to the border up here in Clare Isle. Mm, How maybe. much was it, Kate? Well, I paid £100, but that's not a lot when it comes to Weemsware. Good piece of Weemsware can make hundreds and hundreds of pounds. It's quite nice. It's a, I quite like the plums, but I'm, like not, sure, plumbing, I'm not sure about this bit. What, that, it, that border going around the yeah, top? Yeah, mm -hmm. just a bit. Yeah. Strange colour, I think. So, really. Kate, what, what sort of a profit are we looking for here? I don't think it's going to be huge. In fact, I think by the time we'd found the three items for the girls, it was quite tricky to find a fourth item. Yes. But um, I think we might stand a chance of making perhaps ten... 15, 20 with a following wind, but it's not going to be huge, I have to say. 20% profit's OK with us, I mm. tell you. Anyway, you girls don't have to decide right now. OK. okay. okay. Your moment of decision will come in the auction. And what we're going to do now is to find out what the auctioneer thinks about it. Now, the bonus item. Is this a plum piece? I think it could be a duffer, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, do you? I do. What's the matter with it? Uh, it's cracked, stained. And in truth, I think it's also lacking a cover, Tim. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So dear. The estimate? 50 to 80. 100 pounds they paid. Too rich. Too it could rich. happen. It's got the right name. Weems is hot. Yes. But it, it's flawed. He doesn't like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, the blues, Sue and Margaret. What's your favourite on this side of the table? The Lalique stands out, Tim. Does it? Wonderful thing. Well, of course, it's got the right name, I suppose, hasn't it? Absolutely. It's a, it's a thing of quality. It was then, it is now, and it's in good order. Like that very much. OK. £80 they paid. What's your estimate? 100 to 200 certainly. Oh, right, yeah. This is the place to come, I tell you. Great. Now, the Arts and Crafts pipe rack. I mean, it's quite decorative, isn't it? There's a... A naive charm about it, perhaps. Uh, he doesn't like it. I can tell he doesn't <laughs> like it. You don't like it, do you? It's a bit O-level woodwork, come off. O-level <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I never did O-level woodwork. I wouldn't know, mate. OK, O-level woodwork or not, what's it worth? 20 to £30. Pounds. Oh, that's great. And he paid £18. Pounds. Not bad. Could make a profit, then. Could do. Could do. Very good. What about the teapot? Is that going to sell all right? Mailing blue and white, popular northeast pottery. It sells well up here. Good local collecting following for that. Shouldn't be a problem. How much? 40 to 60. Not enough. 80 pounds they pay. Yikes. A bit rich at that. Is it? We would need the gods with us. What you call a rich brew? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope that Charles has chosen their bonus buy wisely. Sue, Hi. Margaret, Carlos. <laughs> the bonus moment. OK, oh, yes. reveal what you spent all that change on. They right. say small is beautiful, Tim. Really? And this really is quite classic. Is it? What is it? Well, we know quite clearly it's a snuff box. Um, it's beautifully carved, period wise, it's 1800, 1820, with this wonderful sort of revelry scene. We think continental, we think perhaps French, Germanic. Beautiful object. Um, just very clean. Very clean, Tim. Clean, clean, clean. tidy, and ideal. <laughs> As a bonus lot. <laughs> bit like you then, Charles, well, really. So, yeah. They like, say small is beautiful, don't they? <laughs> Size isn't everything, I was told. No. Anyway, there we go. Now, Carlos, how much yes. did you pay? Tim, we paid £120. Well, I paid £120 for it. How much? £120. Thanks for coming. <laughs> well, I suppose it doesn't sound much if you say it quickly. Well, I rate um, it, though, Tim. If it went to a well, sale, I could see it. I mean, my auction guide in any, any sale in across the UK ought to be certainly one to one fifty. With right. the right online exposure, to me, it ought to be making that top guide. OK, with right exposure, it's going to make top guide. I it's £150. So. Pounds. You paid £120. £124. OK, so there's potentially £30 pounds profit in there, do you think? I, on really, a good day, I really hope so, too. Yeah, I, I really hope so, life. too. <laughs> well, absolutely <laughs> right. How do you girls feel about it instinctively? Oh, I don't, I don't think it's worth that. Do you not? You don't have to talk with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Max, what do you think? 
Well, I thought it was a, a makeup. So it yeah, but makeup have, a, have a little handle, darling, because you've got a big decision coming up here. It's a compact. 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 Yeah. Yeah, a compact. It could be compact. 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 Yeah, a compact dating from. It's, it's again French. <laughs> French. 1805, perhaps. Mm. It's that Napoleonic period. And if it has a dual purpose as a compact, well, ideal, it might appeal to a lady. Well, there you go. Anyway, you don't have to decide right now, OK, because we're going to trot off and see what the auctioneer thinks about it, and you'll decide just before the auction. <laughs> right. What's so funny about that, Charles? <laughs> <laughs> it's bonus time. The Bois de Citron box. What do you think, Paul? I love it. I, that's a lovely little object. How much? 60 to 80. <laughs> 120 pounds, you pay. Maybe a little rich. What do you mean, a little rich? <laughs> Twice your low estimate. <laughs> oh, gosh, what a shambles. How many pieces of jewellery have you got at home? You've got a ring, a brooch, some necklet to go around your neck? Two or three pieces, anyway, I bet. Well, the ladies on the continent around about 1900 sure had got big ideas. Because this, believe it or not, is a lady's jewellery casket an elegant pink satin lined interior and you can imagine the rows of precious jewels arranged on the bottom. Extraordinary object, isn't it? It's made of earthenware and these designs have been drawn on the surface in a sort of neo-renaissance style and then it's been lead glazed. The whole thing was then mounted up in these rather extraordinary and wacky gilt bronze mounts. The only mark that I can see on the underside there is the letter H. H stands for what? Some would say hideous. Well, I don't know. It's all in the eye of the beholder. The estimate is two to three hundred pounds. Let's see how it does in the auction. And Jill, Kate, how are you feeling, all right? Petrified. Are you? Why are you petrified, Jill? It's not like you. I don't feel too confident today, I'm afraid. Do you not? No. Did you not have your Weetabix, though? No, I didn't, no. Oh, dear, oh, dear. What bit's going to make you your money? Oh, I think the Scottish sauce they are going to do the bit for us. You reckon? Yep. Pretty certain. And Kate? I have to agree, actually. I don't think those were expensive, so my money would be on those. Right. Yep. Mm. And you've always got your bonus item. Don't decide now, but I'll give you your chance. OK. Now, the first item up's going to be your egg cruet set. Here we go. Lot 100 into this silver and plate, ladies and gentlemen, one of my favourites. What a handsome little lot we have here. <laughs> From uh, WMF, presents itself in lovely order. What a lovely thing indeed. What think you? 100? 100, not expensive at that. 50 for a start. 30 bed, 30 pound, 30 bed, 30 pound, 30 bed, 35. 35, 35, 35, 45. 50, 50 pounds, 50 bid. With the lady, 50 pounds, 50 bid, 50 pounds, 50 bid. Mileage in this yet? 55, 55. Are you quite sure you're all done? I am selling at 55 pound. Uh... Oh, no. You paid 55, you got 55. It wiped its face. <laughs> right, now the silver ladles. Here we go. Lot number 101. Georgian provincial silver, ladies and gentlemen. And aren't these smart? Absolutely delicious. What think you? Anyone a hundred? A hundred? Sixty for a start. Fifty bed, fifty pound, fifty bed, fifty pound, fifty bed at sixty, seventy. You're in profit. Eighty. You're eighty pound. Eighty, 80 bed. This is reasonable. Eighty pound. Eighty, 80 bed. Eighty pound. Ninety. Ninety pound. Nice stay with it. I'll take five. Ninety pound. Ninety bed. Ninety pound. Ninety bed. Ladies bed, are you quite sure you're all done? I am selling at ninety pound. Uh, Oh, yes, three one three forty pounds profit straight up. Well done, girls. Well done. Now the Scotch bottle <laughs> with the crack. That's a go. different story. Well, I like this, ladies and gentlemen. Don't I just? How unusual! Uh, late nineteenth, early twentieth century Scotch bottle overlaid in silver. I like that very much. What? Thank you. A hundred pound. I like it more full. <laughs> one hundred pound. Fifty for a start. Fifty pound this lot, fifty bed, fifty pound, thank you, fifty pound, fifty bed, fifty pound, fifty bed, fifty pound, fifty bed. One bed gonna steal this, fifty pound, oh, come fifty on. bed, fifty pound, fifty bed. Are you quite sure you're all done? It's going. Last chance now at fifty five. Now you both want it. Oh Jim's in. <laughs> you're in profit. Fifty five. Stay with it. Go on. Fifty five. Listen to her. Fifty five. <laughs> fifty five. Fifty five. Are you all done? I'm selling at fifty five pound uh, Yes! 55 pounds plus 5 pounds, that is 45 pounds yes. overall. Now, the moment oh. to test. Are you going to go with the Weems brush pot? Are you going to go with the Weems jam pot? 
What are you going to do? I'm Hundred pounds paid for it. I'm not convinced. No, You're not convinced. I'm not convinced either. You're going to do it. You're going to no, take the phone sign up or not? You can keep it. You can keep it. You yes. sure? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Certainly. Absolutely. You disappointed, Kate? You can know. That's going to leave. Well, you paid hundred pounds for it. You're not going to take it, definitely. No, definitely. Okay. Not. We have no bonus item, so let's see what happens. Here it comes. Lot number one hundred five, ladies and gentlemen. Weemswear, very popular wares, these ladies and gentlemen. Of course, famously collected by the late Queen Mother. Uh, what say you, £100? Not expensive at that. 50 40 bed, £40, pound, £40, bed, £40, pound, £42, £42, £45. With me, £50, £50, pound, £50, bed, £50, pound, £55, £60, £5, £70, £5, £80, £5, oh, £90, £90, pound, £90, bed. nice thing, £90, pound, £90, bed, £90, pound. he's thinking, £90, pound. 90 bed, 90 pound, 90 bed. Are you quite sure you're all done? It's reasonable at 90 pound. Uh, yes. 90 pound. <laughs> <laughs> Minus 10 pounds. Well, that got pretty close, didn't it? <laughs> anyway, now, you have to promise me, you're 45, you're 45 pounds up, OK, which is perfect. Don't tell the blues anything, all right? OK, great. Next up, the jewellery casket. Is this something to die for, or simply hideous? Our 19th century Italian armaloo mounted casket, Italian jewellery box, earthenware, decorated in a Renaissance style. It's marked, ladies and gentlemen. It's all there. It's a handsome lot. What think you, 500? Not expensive at that. 400? I'll start at 2, 200, 200, 200, 220, 240. 260, 260, 260. Where's the competition? 260, 280, 290, 300, madam. 320, 340, 360, 380, 400, 400. Not expensive, ladies and gentlemen. 400, 400. But selling at 400 pounds. Uh, 359. Well done. Not so hideous. <laughs> Okay, so Margaret, yes. Carlos, this is your moment. Yeah. How are you feeling, Anthony? Uh, nervous on one or two things, but hopefully the profit at the end of it. What, you don't think you're going to make a profit on one or two we things? Won't, we won't make a profit on the teapot, I've got me down to well done. Well, that's not the right way to start off. I tell you, that's defeatist. <laughs> <laughs> Mags, how are you feeling, darling? The same, a bit nervous. Are you? Uh, Why are you so nervous? <laughs> you had that half a bottle of whiskey before you got up. <laughs> so you got I know, I can <laughs> smell it. Too. Yeah, absolutely, very nice. Too. Well, you're close enough, Carlos. <laughs> and Charles, what are you spending your commission on? I think if the Lalique flies, I think we're into a good day here. Too. I think you are too. Yeah. Well, talking about Lalique flying, it's coming up next. Here we go. Oh, great. Okay. The Lalique clear glass tray, I've got to say this, perhaps is uh, my favourite lot in the sale today. Oh, oh that's what we like. <laughs> An object of quality. I think good value at 200. Oh. 100 to start, mate. 100 bid, 100. 100. Oh, yes. 100. 100. Oh. 100. 100, 110, 120, 120, 120, <laughs> Here we go. 120. It can sell at this, ladies and gentlemen. What think you? Last chance, the leak tray sell 130. Oh, 130, <laughs> 130. We're getting there slowly. 130, 130. Last chance now. I'm selling, ladies and gentlemen, at 130 pound. Uh, Yes, well, yes. <laughs> 130 pounds, 50 pounds profit. I love it. Oh, oh, it. Yes, Very good. Oh, now, the old pipe rack. Look up. Here comes yes. the pipe rack. What think you of this? You pipe smokers, what think you of this little lot here? Because I know you're out there. The uh, arts and crafts style uh, hand carved it. pipe rack, ladies and gentlemen. Anyone 50 pounds? It has charm. 30. 10 for a start. 10 bid. Thank you, yes. sir. 10 pounds divided. 10 pounds divided. 15, 20. Five. Here we go. Oh, yes. Stay with it. <laughs> 25, 25, 25, 25. My bid, the gentleman's there at 25 pounds. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> 25 pounds plus oh, seven pounds. Look at that. Plus, plus. Oh, this is it. This is it. <laughs> Look out for your teapot. Oh, here, here we go. Look out. Don't get too cocky. Thanking you. Lot 123 now, ladies and gentlemen. Our uh, mailing rington's uh, hot water jug together with the teapot. Uh, anyone, £100, not expensive at that, I've seen them there before, 50 for a start, 50 for a start, 30 then, let's get it moving, 30 bid, 30 pound, thank you, 30 pound, 30 bid, 30 pound, 30 bid, 30 pound, 40, 40 pound, 40 bid, 40 pound, 40 bid, 45, 45, 45, 50, 5, 60, 
Five, seventy, five, twenty, eighty. Oh, excellent. Eighty pound, eighty bed, eighty pound, eighty bed. Anyone else, ladies and gentlemen? They're selling now. Well done. Eighty pounds. Wiped its face. Eighty pounds. Fantastic. That's fifty-seven pounds up. Now, a difficult decision. Pay attention now. Are you going to go with the bonus item? This continental burr box. He's recommending it. He paid one hundred and twenty pounds on this box. All right. What do you mean? Well, no, no, are you recommending it? Or uh, well, you are recommending. Follow me. We're quitting well we're ahead. Are you recommending yes. it? Oh, no. Are you recommending it? No. Are you recommending it? No. They've got a profit of um, fifty-seven pounds. It could all go down the Twist toilet. Twist or stick? I say stick. Personally, what? Yeah. You say stick. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Stick. We're quitting well we're ahead. It's his bonus item, and you're not going to take his no. bonus item. No. You sure? Possibly. Right. Okay. It's coming up now. We have no bonus item. Let's see what it brings. Oh, is it? A little early nineteenth century wider Citron stuff box. Pressed wood, ladies and gentlemen. Lovely little example, tactile little lot. Uh, anyone a hundred? Fifty for a start. Fifty, thank you. Fifty pound. Fifty bid. Fifty pound. Fifty bid. Fifty pound. Fifty bid. Fifty pound. Fifty bid. I don't believe it. You're very wise, ladies. Five. Sixty-five. 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 Seventy. Quite sure you're all done. It's selling now at. £70. Uh, very wise. £70. Well done. £70. <laughs> £70. Well, please, Minus 50. <laughs> 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 Minus 50. 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 Well, oh, there we go. <laughs> at, least he, at least he was honest about it. Yeah, yeah. Very good. OK. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel a gin and tonic coming on. I don't like you. Absolutely. We'll go and have a sniff of snow. Gracious me, what a splendid day we've had. A double whammy of profits. I can't believe it. This is unheard of on Bargain Hunt, as our fans will know. Every programme has to have a loser, though, and sadly, the Reds are our losers today. But not oh, so bad, is it? Well... £45 pounds worth of <laughs> winnings. There you go. You're going to take it, then? 45 smackers. You? There's your £40. Pounds. Check it's all there. Please. Check it's all there. The cheek of it. There's your £45. Yeah. Pounds. You feeling happy about all of this? Yes. Oh, yes. OK, fine. I have to tell you that if you'd taken your expert's bonus item, you'd be going home with £35 pounds now, all right? Well, That's not underhand. It's just reporting the facts. OK, now, Blues, well. the victor. Oh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen Charles okay. Hansen look so pleased. It feels so good, Tim. It feels so good. Well, savour it, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> it never happened before, absolutely. 57 yeah. smackers. Oh, yes. 57 smackers, there's your Put 50 in, whatnot. <laughs> Dear, oh dear, I think they've been on the source. <laughs> anyway, £57, congratulations. <laughs> if you'd taken your expert bonus item, you'd be going home with £7 now. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Not at all, Charles. Anyway, we don't yeah. feel badly about that, do we? No. 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 Join us soon for some more bargain hunting, yes? Yes! yes! <laughs> And for more information about Bargain Hunt, including how the programme was made, log on to bbc.co.uk slash lifestyle. And more antiques on the way, Cash in the Attic from Great Yarmouth here on BBC One, after the news.